Well, first of all, let me say good morning to members of the media. Uh, there are two issues I want to discuss with you this morning. The first one is the uh, situation concerning the post office, the postal division. The next uh, issue after that will be the hospital uh, division of the BIU. Uh, we met with the postal workers this morning uh, at about uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, we met with them also on Monday morning uh, at about 8.30 um, to apprise them of the situation that had transpired by the mediation process that took place uh, last week Friday. And it's related in relationship to one of the colleagues that was terminated uh, about two and a half years ago. Uh, and the reason for that termination um, several years ago was uh, there was a number of packages that was on the vehicle that he was driving and the package went missing and as a result of that the management team basically fired the worker uh, because they believed that he had some involvement in the missing package. Mm -hmm. I can say to you that whilst we understand um, the management's point of view in respect to saying that uh, he was fired under the Postal Act I think it's section 69, they say 69, 70, 71, and also uh, 72 and 75. Uh, the issue is very concerning to us because the parcel in question was also under police surveillance. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that, to be, to be clear. So he was charged uh, by uh, the police. He was exonerated all, of all those charges, uh, I want to say out of October, November last year. And now the BIU is looking to have him reinstated, and the management team is saying, well, that's not going to happen. So as I said to you a moment ago, we've had meetings with our members on Monday morning and again this morning. Uh, they don't understand how come uh, he can't be reinstated. What the management team is saying to us is that uh, maybe we should go uh, through the arbitration process to see if we can get his job back. We believe that the courts have ruled, and if I can use this scenario, it would be like someone going to the Supreme Court, being found guilty or not guilty, and then you now go want to try them in the lower courts. You simply can't have the judicial, the judicial system making a decision on something that somebody's acquitted of all charges, and you're now talking about you want to have an arbitration process take place. That's not going to happen. So the members have decided this morning, the division of the post the division of the BIU have decided that they've done tools for today. Mm -hmm. They will return to work on Monday morning uh, at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, whatever time they make, with the understanding that the BIU executive uh, board is to uh, have, a, a meet, have a meeting with them amongst themselves and decide exactly when we're going to call a general membership meeting of the entire BIU membership to apprise them of the situation that's taking place with the Postal Division. The second issue concerns the Hospital Division. This one here also concerns us, and the reason why I say it concerns you, uh, I'm not sure which one I put first. Um, we recently had an arbitrator award that was given to the BIU uh, and the Hospital Board on the 21st of this month. The arbitrator award goes back to when we had the arbitration on the I think it was the 29th of um, November that we actually had the arbitration for the hospital class of modern women. The arbitrator's award has been handed down by the, the three, three members of the tribunal. And I can tell you that from the BIU's point of view, the award that has been handed down, I consider it inhumane. And let me just tell you why I consider it inhumane. The hospital. <coughs> Hospital's financial statements for January 31st, 2010 and for January 31st, 2011 both shows that the hospital made a considerable profit in those two years. And people might say, what you call a considerable profit? $18 million in 2010, $18 million in 2011, that's after expenses. What the BIU had asked for in the course of negotiations was a $35 wage increase. That probably represented maybe a 3.5% or 3.4% wage increase. Through the um, process, we also agreed that we'll, we, would, we would accept $30, of course, the board first year and second year, and that's about a 2.95% increase for our members. The arbitration processes came back um, because the hospital was trying to get a five year freeze on wages, and they would accept assessed wages from year to year to see whether or not they'll give an increase. 
So in our position in the arbitration process is they wanted a five-year freeze on wages. The reason why we call, I call the award inhumane is because what's going to happen to other employers out there is they're going to look at this award and see that her as an employer making a reasonable size profit and they are not seeing fit to give the workers an increase. You can't simply have other costs, whether it's electricity costs, whether it's food costs and other kind of stuff continue to rise, an employer is out there making a reasonable profit and the by the arbitration process, we thought that you know, we will get a reasonable result. We may not have got the $30 first year, $30 second year, but we certainly didn't expect for the award to come back and give a wage freeze for the first year where the workers got no increase from 2011 to 2012. And from 2012 to 2013, they've got $20, which probably works out to be about 2%. I don't know how that tribunal came to the, that conclusion, but I can tell you that uh, from the BIU's point of view, and as I said to the members, because we met with them last night, as I said to them last night, the award is binding on both parties. That means that we can't go have industrial action to protest the award. But let's just be clear, because I don't know how the public's going to say, well, I thought the BIU lost the arbitration, why are they protesting? Here's what the members of the division are going to protest. There is also a, a, another part where we got an agreement in 2000 for the 2009-2011 agreement, where it was agreed to give the National Auxiliary a $12 upgrade. And we have a document in writing, but the workers never got that trial dollars. The arbitration process said it was beyond their terms of reference, so they couldn't make a ruling on it. So the division decided last night they had given the executives uh, the directive to go to management, and they have $48 to reinstate that trial dollars that was given during the bargaining, bargaining process. And if it's not given, then those 120 something more employees will take some form of industrial action. So I don't want the public to say, well, why the hospital workers done the protests and then, because that won't be against the arbitrator's award. So let's just be clear. Because I can tell you, somebody's going to miss the point, and they're going to call the talk show, so I thought the BIU lost the arbitration. That's going to be two separate issues. And I'm hoping that when, whether it's the Royal Gazette, Bermuda Sun, or whoever writes the story, please write it correctly. That there's two separate issues here. We've got an arbitrator's award for the collective bond agreement, and we've got an agreement where a trial on upgrade was to be given to the National Auxiliary, and it was $12 first year, and an additional $12 in the second year, provided that people took some training, got certified, so it was two separate $12. I entertain any questions. Uh, maybe I should add one other thing. We have also spoken with the current Minister of Health about the hospital and the challenges that our members are having done at the hospital. I can tell you we also spoke to the previous minister about the issues, about the number of issues we've got going on at the hospital, and there's a time bomb ready to explode, right? So much so that our members signed a petition last year, I may get the time frame a bit wrong, I want to say they signed a petition probably May, May or June last year. They got no response to that petition. Three or four weeks later, they sent another letter to the CEO at the hospital. Very concerned about the conditions at the hospital. Probably three or four months after, to be at a town hall sit down meeting with the BPSU, the BIU, along with management, to discuss the both unions' concerns about issues at the hospital. And my understanding from the membership last night to date, absolutely nothing has happened. We can't continue to allow these sort of things to fast in the workplace because in the air you're going to find something that's going to happen, and the public's going to say, well, almost like it's happened overnight. It has not happened overnight. We've got issues that's been building up in a lot of areas, hospital, you name it, and the BIU has been talking to our members, talking to management, trying to get these matters resolved. So when the workers say they had enough, I don't want somebody to think that it just happened overnight. That would not be true. Any questions? Oh yeah, the, uh, the nursing auxiliary agreement you were talking about. What were the years for the $12 raises? I didn't catch that. The $12 uh, upgrade would have been from October 2009 to uh, October 2010. And then they would have got an additional $12 for October 2010 to October 2011. And we have that document in right. We actually sold that to our membership, and the membership agreed to um, the proposal. Would it be possible for us to get copies of it so we make sure we get that part of the story correct, as you say? I can provide you for copy of that. Just be clear what you're getting, because I don't want somebody to say, well, okay, there is 
two signature lines. We have price from the hospital has signed, the price from the BIU has not signed. Let's just be clear why the person uh, from the BIU has not signed that document. The document had to be presented to the membership, so we couldn't put our signature on it before we took it to the membership, because the member said, well, you already agreed to it. What, what are you bringing it or not? So that's why you will see um, our signature is not there, but let's just be clear. The hospital told us that they are not aware of this document. So the BIU had to provide this document to the hospital. So whether they had it on file and they was testing us, well, we delivered on the test. We provided them with a copy of the document that we took to the membership that the membership agreed to. Wait, actually, as far as the hospital goes, though, aren't they raising that profit to pay for the new facility that's going to be finished next year? Well, when you say are they raising their profit to pay for the new facility, my understanding is that whilst we have expenses, one of the expense items is salaries for your staff. The hospital, when I said to you a few minutes ago, made $18 million profit. The staff that worked there, whether the DPSU or VIU or whether somebody else, helped this, the board to make the $18 million profit. This reminds me of the situation at the Bank of Butterfield about probably 15, maybe 20 years ago where the bank made $28 million one year, and because they made $24 million next year, they considered that a loss, so they didn't get a staff or increase. Mm -hmm. You can't do that kind of stuff, you know, you really can't. What the staff should have done at the Bank of Butterfield, the next day should have been on the sidewalk waiting for the management, saying, sorry, but we're not going inside till you give us a wager. Because we helped you make the $28 million, we helped you make the $24 million. And because your profits fell by, because your, your, your profit fell by $4 million, you still only made $24 million profit. The similar thing applies here. The hospital made $18 million profit after expenses. So if you couldn't afford to give the BIU the $35 or $30 we asked for, we certainly could have you know, looked at maybe $20 fresh year, $20 second year, $15 fresh year, $15, $15 second year. But to give our members no increase for the fresh year, even from the hospital's point of view and from the tribunal's point of view, as I said, I don't continue to say it's inhumane for them to think that people know it's, it's going to affect staff morale. Because people are going to say, well, what is it all for? I'm coming on to do honest days, work for honest days, pay. The rate of inflation is going, going up, and I expect to get a reasonable increase. Reasonable increase. Now, if my employer is not making any money, then we can have a conversation, which we've had with other employers, about a wage freeze. We've done it at, you heard me say it before, HWT for almost three years. We'll put people on shorter work weeks. When the hotel division was on a wage freeze for, for three years. So it's not uncommon if they, if they can prove to us that they don't have no bottom line, then they are rip. We're not going to demand they pay. But one thing I want to be clear to the public, to Bermuda today, is that Dr. Ball, Brother Adi, Brother Molly, Brother Robert Johnson, and all the senior officers of the BIU, has always told us that when we look at going to a set of negotiations, we look at an, uh, the employer's financial statement, and based on their ability to pay, our members deserve an increase. $18 million tells us the employer could afford to pay. A reasonable increase, they can afford to pay. If they had no bottom line, take the point that maybe they couldn't afford to pay. So that's why, for the left of me, I don't understand how the tribunal could come to that conclusion. And the other people are going to wonder why. This is one of the reasons why the BIU is very skeptical about going in that form now, that, arbit that arbitration situation. Because they couldn't make a, a decision on something like this that all the evidence pointed to that these guys got a, they deserve a reasonable increase. So you'll give them something that's, a, that's even that more tangible. I'm going to say, well, and we must trust them. I can tell you, the trust for the arbitration process is slowly, slowly dwindling from the BIU's perspective. Slowly dwindling.